Hello again and welcome to Channel 14 News. I'm Mitch Montani. And I'm Rachel Pellegrino. Weather around Waynesburg has been quite dreary, but last week the Beehive was rocking with another noon tunes. Rebecca Vaughn has the story. While the cold, dreary weather tries its best to give students the winter blues, Waynesburg University's Student Activity Board hosted a noon tunes in the Beehive to help raise students' spirits in the midst of these winter slump months. With free snacks and coffee available, students were able to relax a little while listening to musician Hope Wadley, a singer-songwriter from Michigan. I caught up with Wadley after her performance. It's an absolute joy to perform here. Um, I really like performing at colleges because I love college. <laughs> Wadley likes to describe her music as a therapy session through singing songs. Um, yeah, I'm honored to be here and I started doing music when I was young. I think I always enjoyed singing, but I started writing songs when I was six years old and I think it was always sort of a coping mechanism. Noon Tunes, an event that is held multiple times throughout the school year, is widely welcomed amongst the students. Yeah, um, the music here just creates a calm environment and the iced coffee just, um, you know, helps me get through studying and just gets, uh, gets me through the day better. The event allows students to collaborate on schoolwork or just simply enjoy the refreshments and music while relaxing with friends. Uh, performer doing a great job strum, strumming that guitar here, bringing up the vibes, bringing up the good spirit in the cafeteria and the hive. I'm Rebecca Vaughn with Channel 14 News. No one really knows what's going on with Mother Nature, and you never know when she will change the weather and keep you home sick. Luckily, Drew Rhea caught up with student health to keep students ahead of the curve this school year. It's cold and flu season at Waynesburg University and Student Health Services are here to help. Located in the Armory, Student Health Services provides aid to students who may become sick during the school year. Jennifer Dean, Nurse Director of Student Services, says they typically see an increase in students who are sick this time of year. This could happen due to mixing of germs from home, lack of sleep, stress, or the shared spaces at Waynesburg University. If you get sick, Dean is here to help. Um, they can stop down and see us. We're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 4, our office hours. They can also call us. Our phone number is 724-852-3332. We also have a lot of good um, information on our student health tab on MyConnect. Um, it lists a lot of handouts that say on the most common things that we see with students so they can look and see, you know, how to help themselves, how to treat the symptoms, and when they should see a doctor. Read more in my article for the Yellow Jacket newspaper about wellness and health around campus. For the Yellow Jacket and WCTV News, I'm Andrew Rhea. Pennsylvania is a state like no other. One day it could be 60 degrees and the next it could be 30 and snowing. After the wild winter weekend passed through Waynesburg, WCTV's Lindsay Sanger caught up with students around campus. It's a winter wonderland here in Waynesburg, PA after a surprise blizzard hit last week. Waynesburg experienced its first big snowstorm of the season this past week, and the students at the university are very confused on how to feel about it. And then last night it just like started snowing real bad, so we've had to deal with like the cold weather today, and uh, our feet have been like frozen. Uh, we've had to go inside and get some coffee and, and just like try to stay warm. I kind of like the snow, but it was weird because we had like 60 degree weather last week, and now it's very snowy and cold. <laughs> The Farmer's Almanac predicts the snowiest periods will be in late November, mid to late January, early February, and early March. This late season snowstorm brought five inches of snow with it overnight. The cold may be a downer, but the students are making the best of it. Yesterday, um, like seven or eight of my friends went sledding for like two hours, so that was kind of fun. Southwestern Pennsylvania missed out on some major snow in November and December. This storm may be Mother Nature's way of reminding us that winter isn't over yet. This has been Lindsay Singer reporting for Channel 14 News. Thinking about something sweet this Valentine's Day? We have just the perfect thing for couples and singles. It comes in all shapes and sizes. WCTV's Emma Hurley introduces us to a special local artist. 
you to have cookies. Show me that rolling pin. If you look closely, you can almost taste the sweetness in the air. Leanne Shaner's kitchen is a perfect canvas of confection. She's called the Cookie Rookie, but she's been crafting gourmet cookies for decades. It's a labor of love that began about 30 years ago, decorating Christmas cookies with her mother-in-law, Nancy. We would do Christmas cookies every year, and my mother-in-law just expected us to slap some icing on it and, yeah. and be it done, and I wanted it to be a little more fancy. Her trademark Red Lobster is an ode to the late Nancy Shaner, who purchased this original cutter for her as a Christmas gift, and it became an essential part of their holiday tradition. And she was like, you cannot make a lobster for Christmas, and I was like, oh, I absolutely can. Eventually, that tradition transformed into a business, mostly due to word-of-mouth reviews. It's all about what God is leading us to do. We're really advertised other than Facebook. And they've been providing Waynesburg with tons of hand-decorated cookies for 10 years now. We can't keep up with the demand. Leanne and her husband Andy work hard to keep up with orders, averaging about 12 to 14 dozen a day. Andy does the cutting, packing, and accounting, and Leanne is the piping master, hand-decorating each and every cookie. And in keeping with tradition, each customer who places an order for a dozen or more receives the signature lobster cookie. Yes, that's, that's the original that's one. The original. Mm -hmm. And a card explaining the symbolism. In Waynesburg, Emma Hurley, WCTV News. Cookies are $23 a dozen for a custom order and $18 a dozen for an order of their cookie of the month. Your Cookie Rookie also offers cookie decorating kits available for purchase and will be offering three cookie decorating classes with Leanne over the course of the next two months. More information and contact can be found on Your Cookie Rookie's Facebook page. That's it for campus news and local news. We'll have news from around the nation whenever we come back. Standing outside of Buell Hall with Thayer in the background, the rain has stopped today, but that does not mean we'll be done with the rain for the rest of the week. You can expect some rain in the next couple of days, so you may want to keep those rain boots handy. For a more detailed forecast, stay tuned for later in the evening as I will have my full weather update. One of the two NYPD officers shot in two separate attacks on police over the weekend was released from the hospital on Monday to the applause of fellow officers. Lieutenant Jose Gautreau was shot in the arm Sunday when a suspect walked into a Bronx precinct and opened fire. The suspect ran out of bullets and was taken into custody. The previous day, the suspect opened fire on two officers sitting in a van in the same area, wounding one of them. The officer was grazed in the chin and neck and wasn't seriously injured. He was released from the hospital Sunday. The suspect, Robert Williams, is doing court Monday. He's charged with attempted murder, criminal possession of a weapon, and resisting arrest. New York City's police commissioner and Mayor Bill de Blasio both called the attacks assassination attempts against police officers. Discussion on gun control legislation got testy in Virginia Friday. A group of gun owners cheered Republicans and booed Democrats to the point the committee room had to be cleared. Victoria Sanchez has the story. Virginia's 2020 Democratic legislators continue to move forward with an issue they've tried to tackle for years in the previously Republican majority General Assembly. House Bill 961 more commonly referred to as the assault weapon ban, is moving closer to law. Delegate Mark Levine calls it a compromise bill, with some of the stronger restrictive language slashed from the original version. 
The heart of the differences between this bill and the other is that this substitute is less restrictive than the original bill. It allows every gun owner in Virginia who lawfully possesses a weapon to keep that weapon. No one has to give up a weapon. I'm not going to pound the podium. I'm just going to say that you need to make sure you allocate the money in the budget for the lawsuit that's coming and understand the law and bring a fat wallet. As with previous gun restriction bills this session, opponents in the House Public Safety Committee say this legislation would be a direct violation of the Second Amendment and vowed to keep fighting. The House Public Safety Committee passed the bill along party lines. It now moves to the full House. The White House is set to ask Congress for less border wall funding. A budget proposal expected to be released this week only asks for $2 billion for the construction of a wall. Last year, the White House asked for $5 billion, which it did not get from Congress. Funding for the border wall has been a major sticking point between the administration and Congress. In 2018, President Donald Trump allowed the government to shut down for a historically long impasse that did not yield him the requested money for his wall. A small plane crashed after takeoff in Georgia. The Cessna 501 disappeared from radar after takeoff from Atlanta Regional Airport Falcon Field. The wreckage was later found in a remote area of Gordon County by some people riding ATVs. Authorities say it looks like no one survived. It was snowing at the time, but it's not clear if weather was a factor in the crash. No word on how many people were on board or where they were headed. The Federal Aviation Administration and National Transportation Safety Board are investigating. Passengers on board a quarantine cruise ship are facing some bad news. At least 65 new cases of the Wuhan coronavirus have been found on the Diamond Princess, currently docked in Yokohama, Japan. That brings the total number of infections on board to 135. Some people have been taken to hospitals, but thousands are still on the ship under lockdown. Japan's government says they are considering testing all passengers aboard, regardless of whether they have symptoms. Passengers are set to disembark on February 19th when the quarantine lifts. The Department of Justice believes four members of the Chinese military were behind one of the largest hacks in U.S. history. The 2017 breach affected millions of Americans. Daryl Forbes has the latest. The scale of the theft was staggering. Staggering and one of the largest on record, according to Attorney General William Barr. A federal grand jury charged four people in the data breach of Equifax, a credit reporting agency. The hackers obtained the names, birth dates, and social security numbers of nearly 150 million Americans. The Department of Justice says the hackers are members of the Chinese People's Liberation Army. Attorney General Barr says it's unusual for the U.S. to charge members of another country's military or intelligence service. Equifax released a statement on the issue saying in part, the attack on Equifax was an attack on U.S. consumers as well as the United States. Cybercrime is one of the greatest threats facing our nation today, and it is an ongoing battle that every company will continue to face as attackers grow more sophisticated. Equifax disclosed the hack in September of 2017, but it had discovered the breach three months earlier. The data breach and how the company handled it prompted the resignation of CEO Richard Smith and a number of civil lawsuits. Equifax says it is spending over a billion dollars to enhance security and technology to protect consumer data. I'm Daryl Forges reporting. Keeping your personal information protected can start at home. To protect your computer, the FBI says to keep your firewall turned on. Install or update antivirus software and anti-spyware technology and turn off your computer when you're done using it. Attention parents, around 14,000 baby carriers are being recalled due to the faulty buckles, which could cause the child to fall out. The Infantino carriers were sold at Target and Amazon late last year and include the Go Forward, Flip Front, and Up Close models. The injuries have been reported, but for more information, go to the company's website at infantino.com. The New York Times reports some Republicans tried to stop the president from firing an impeachment witness. A handful of GOP senators reportedly intervened for Gordon Sondland. Times sources say the Republicans thought it looked bad for President Trump to fire the U.S. ambassador to the European Union. Reports indicate Sondland was ready to leave on his own terms. 
two key impeachment witnesses are facing what looks like retribution from the president. Trump fired Sondland and Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman Friday. Both had testified against him during the impeachment hearings. Sondland was once a fairly close ally to President Trump. That'll do it for National News. Whenever we return, Gwen Napier will give you the rundown on what's going on in the business and entertainment world. Welcome back to Channel 14 News. I'm Gwen Napier with your business and entertainment update. Valentine's Day is just a few days away, and it's usually an expensive gift-giving day for people in relationships. This year, Valentine's Day spending is expected to once again reach unprecedented levels. That's according to a just-released annual survey. Mandy Gather has a closer look in today's Consumer Watch. A blooming and record-breaking Valentine's Day. According to the National Retail Federation, the average person will spend a little over $196 to shower those they care for with love. That's an expected record-breaking total of $27.4 billion, a 32% spending increase and nearly $7 billion more than last year. According to the survey, spouses and significant others are expected to get more than half of that chunk of money, with many people planning to spend their money on classic gifts like greeting cards, candy and flowers, and the top choice, jewelry, with some lucky recipients getting a memorable experience like game tickets or a spa day. But those surveyed also said they will spread the love further this year, indicating they'd buy Valentine's gifts for friends, children's classmates, co-workers, and even pets. In fact, 27% of those surveyed said they were buying gifts for their furry friends. The average consumer is expected to spend about $12 on their pet. That's up from about $7 last year. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. Right now, the Loop operates in the East Coast and in Paris of France. Next year, the service is expected to launch in California, London, Toronto, as well as parts of Germany. With Valentine's Day just around the corner, a new survey finds that most coupled Americans plan to spend about $150 to celebrate their love, unless they're millennials. That age group between the ages of 24 and 39 is planning to spend $208 on food, entertainment, and gifts. This is according to a new survey from the bankrate.com and YouGov PLC. Millennials cite newer relationships and social media as reasons for their spending plans, but they aren't the only generation planning to spend more than the average. Gen X plans to spend $160. Baby boomers, meanwhile, plan to spend just $100. According to the National Retail Federation, adults in the U.S. are forecast to spend more than $27 billion, a jump of 32% over the last year's projection. Facebook officials' social media accounts were hacked Friday. The hacking group Armine posted an image on Facebook's Twitter and Instagram saying, quote, Hi, we are Armine. Well, even Facebook is hackable, but at least their security is better than Twitter. Facebook said in a statement, some of these corporate social accounts were briefly hacked, but we have secured and restored access. The hacking group has previously compromised HBO, The New York Times, and NFL. Amazon wants President Trump to testify in a battle over a $10 billion Pentagon cloud contract. According to a court filing unsealed Monday, Amazon has asked federal court for permission to depose Trump and Defense Secretary Mark Esper. 
It's part of an ongoing protest over the Defense Department's handling of a multi-billion dollar cloud computing contract known as the Joint Enterprise Defense Infrastructure. It's highly unusual to depose a sitting president for a contract protest. In statement, Amazon said in part, President Trump has repeatedly demonstrated his willingness to use his position as president and commander in chief to interfere with government functions, including federal procurements. To advance his personal agenda, the decision on the motion to depose is expected the weeks coming. Some winners at the 92nd Academy Awards, everyone expected, while others made history. David Daniel has our Oscar highlights. Brad Pitt. The acting honors at the 2020 Oscars went to the favorites. Best Supporting Actor winner Brad Pitt thanked his leading man. Leo, I'll ride on your coattails any day, man. <laughs> the view's fantastic. Best Actress winner Renee Zellweger saluted her category's other nominees. Cynthia, Scarlett, Charlize, Saoirse. I have to say, boy, it is an honor to be considered in your company. Best Supporting Actress winner Laura Dern thanked Bruce Dern and Diane Ladd. Some say <clears throat> never meet your heroes, but I say if you're really blessed, you get them as your parents. And Best Actor winner Joaquin Phoenix quoted his late brother River. When he was 17, my brother wrote this lyric. He said, run to the rescue with love and peace will follow. But for a year that revived the hashtag Oscars so white, there was considerable diversity. From the rousing opening number starring Janelle Monet. I'm so proud to stand here as a black, queer artist telling stories. To Taika Waititi of New Zealand winning Best Adapted Screenplay for Jojo Rabbit. And I dedicate this to uh, all the indigenous kids in the world who uh, want to, uh, to do art and dance and write stories. We are the original storytellers and uh, we can uh, make it here as well. To Iceland's Hildur Gunnadotir, the first woman in more than 20 years to win Best Original Score. To the girls, to the women, to the mothers, to the daughters who hear the music bubbling within, please speak up. We need to hear your voices. This is very first Oscar to South Korea. Thank you. Uh, and then there was Parasite, the first Asian film to win a screenplay Oscar. It also won Best International Feature Film, as expected. But then filmmaker Bong Joon-ho returned to the stage a third time to accept Best Director and a fourth, as Parasite made history as the first foreign language film ever to win Best Picture. I feel like a very opportune moment in history is happening right now. <laughs> In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. The only other person to win four Oscars in one year, Walt Disney, in 1954. That'll do it for business and, enter and entertainment. Whenever we return, Sam Hickson has your Waynesburg Sports Report. We're going to fade up to uh, camera three in five, four, three, two, one, take it. Victories have come few and far for Waynesburg's women's basketball team this year, but when they have happened, they are usually in dominant fashion. Waynesburg faced off against Geneva, who they put up a 90 spot against in their last matchup in January. Allie Delaney has been the most efficient three-point shooter in the Jackets lineup, and she was great from behind the arc again. She went 6 of 11 from 3 to go along with 22 points. That matched her season-high point total that she originally had against St. Vincent. Geneva didn't have much offensive support besides Lauren Tipton, who collected 25 points and 16 rebounds, including nine of them offensively. Geneva had 32 of total offensive rebounds in the game, but simply couldn't contain Andrea Orlowski. Orlowski picked up the double-double with 25 points and 13 rebounds in just 28 minutes of play. Here she is, putting that back up and getting the foul and the buckets. Then taking a dish from Aaron Glass, kissing it off 
or from Aaron Joyce, excuse me, and kissing it off the glass for the points. The Jackets won by a final score of 93 to 58. The Jacket men were hoping to follow up the Lady Jays' dominant performance with a victory of their own. But just nine days before Valentine's Day, they had to experience something no one wants to go through in the month of love, heartbreak. Adam Morgani was on the scene. Waynesburg hosted Geneva on Wednesday night for a PAC matchup. Both teams are going in opposite directions as Geneva came into the game with four straight wins and Waynesburg had four consecutive losses. The first half was a half of runs. Waynesburg took an eight-point lead, its biggest lead of the game, on this three-pointer by Frank Bozovic. Then, Geneva went on a 14-4 run and took the lead on this layup from Ethan Moose. Geneva took a one-point lead into halftime. Well, this is a really hostile place to play, probably one of the hardest in the pack, just like how loud it is. And, you know, you might get on a run and everyone will go silent, and then as soon as they hit a three, it's just like the crowd are up. So we just had to keep remembering to, you know, be us. The second half was another back-and-forth battle. Geneva's Matt Vanovich caught fire as he made four threes in the second half. Waynesburg's Ryan Felber countered with three threes of his own. With 1.45 left in the game, Geneva led by seven points. However, Frank Bozovic tied the score at 63 with 36 seconds to go. The stage was set for Nick Rusin as he was able to get the go-ahead tip in with three seconds remaining and gave Geneva the victory 65 to 63. Geneva is now 6 and 5 in PAC play. Our coaches just said, you know, no matter what happens, whether or not you hit guys on that screen, just go up, back up for that rebound, try and get a tip in and, you know, it just happened to fall to me and I'm glad I made it at the end there. Waynesburg is now 4 and 8 in PAC play and its next game will be next Wednesday at WJ at 8 p.m. For WCTV Sports, I'm Adam Morganti. That's all for sports. Coming up next, Dakota Kiefer with the weather. Have you ever been to the Everly Library? If not, you should, because it's great. They have books of all different genres. History, biography, fiction. Try the evolution of life, life of Pi, or Jurassic Park. So what if books aren't your thing? Try movies, like Frozen, or TV shows, like Lost. Books and DVDs aren't the only thing, though. Take a trip to the second floor. Welcome to the Writing Center. These tutors will tell you everything you need to know about writing a paper, and they'll help revise your essays. Now let's head back down. Behold, the Knox Learning Center. Need to print something out five minutes before your next class because you procrastinated? No problem. You can also print off pictures of dogs. Because, well, you can. So grab your homework, laptop, and textbook and study diligently. Bring your lunch, too. Actually, you can't. That's illegal. Now you know the Everly Library. Stop by any time. Seriously, it's open all week. I'm Dakota Kiefer with your WCTV weather update. It's been another rainy day today, and just like last week, the rain is expected to continue throughout the week, but temperatures will start to feel a little more like spring. Wednesday, we'll have a high temperature of 42 degrees during the day. There is a 90% chance of rain, and it will be mostly cloudy throughout the day, and the rain will develop later in the day, and the temperature will drop down to 37 degrees. Thursday, we'll have a high temperature of 47 degrees, but a very low of 19 degrees at night. There is a 70% chance of rain, but is expected to be mostly in the morning. There will also be a western winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. 
And then jumping into the weekend on Friday, we'll have a uh, low of 25 as the cold weather will stick around, or a high of 25 and a low of 12. The rain will go away, but it will be cloudy early on. The clouds will decrease later in the day, and there will be northwestern winds of 10 to 15 miles an hour throughout the day. On Saturday, it will warm up with a high temperature of 41 degrees and a low of 32 degrees. The day will start off with partly cloudy skies in the morning, but will move to fully cloudy skies in the afternoon. On Sunday, there is a chance of snow showers early in the day with a high of 44 degrees and a low of 35. The snow will change to rain showers later in the day, and in the evening, there is expected to be a mixture of rain and snow. And finally, starting off next week on Monday, it will be in the 50s with an expected high of 52 and a low of 42 degrees. It's expected to be partly cloudy throughout the day with snow showers starting in the evening. And guys, there's also a flood watch until Thursday of this week. Oh, wow. I'm pretty sure we were not expecting that this spring or hoping for that early in the spring. Hopefully everyone doesn't need to take high ground. And we know with how Wiley ends up usually, hopefully nothing happens down there or anything significant. That is true. Well, that's all we have for Channel 14 News today. Not at all.